How do you do? Every so often we hear about a train that hits a vehicle at a crossing. Sometimes the vehicle has stalled, or worse yet, the driver tried and failed to beat the train. Sometimes, though, the wreck is the result of distraction, like the man in this story. He'd be dead now except for someone who got his attention and saved him when his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Shining the light of the world into the darkness, this is Unshackled. True Life Stories dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Homeless people may think that money would solve their problems, but riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Those who come to Pacific Garden Mission receive wealth of a different kind. Hearty meals, fresh clothing, and a safe place to sleep, even medical care in the mission clinic. Pastors and counselors share the real riches, the truth that makes them free, the truth of who they are in the eyes of the only one who matters, the one who is the same yesterday and today and forever. He offers unsearchable riches. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3,362 in the series, Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. I wondered if you'd come straight home from your job, Bozy. What are you and Dad doing here? You're supposed to be at work. Well, we planned to go to work late, remember? We stayed home to help you move out today. Move out? This is the day you said you'd move into your own place, son. Did you forget? I'm not ready. Oh, what do you mean you're not ready? I don't have enough money saved. You should have told us. You shouldn't jump to conclusions. I'll decide when I'm ready to move. What kind of parents are you anyway? Try to throw me out. Now, where are you going? None of your business. I'm 21, remember? I'm not a kid anymore. The man in our story allowed a bad temper and drugs to rule his life. But an encounter with a freight train would change everything. This is the conclusion of his story, the true testimony of Del Rey Lytle, right now on Unshackled. I stormed out of the house that June morning, intent on driving to a friend's house to join an ongoing party. On the north side of Main Street in Grandview, Missouri, there were four sets of railroad tracks I had to cross on the way to his house. A large train depot obscured the view of the tracks, and I didn't see the signal lights flashing. Neither did I see the freight train that struck me, going 45 miles an hour. Hey, stand back, folks. You can't come through here. Officer, I'm a paramedic with the Life Flight Helicopter. Okay, come on through. Can I help with casualties? Now, there's only one, the driver, and we're taking him out of the vehicle right now. The car was pushed up the track. It's totaled. Is he alive? Yeah, but unconscious. I was on my way to work when I heard the crash. I can give him CPR. You're a godsend, buddy. Have you notified his family? There's an officer on the way there right now. The paramedic worked on our son until the helicopter arrived to take him to the hospital in Kansas City, which was 15 minutes from our house. When the policeman reached our home, he told us to hurry, or we might not see Dell alive. So we rushed to the hospital. What's taking so long? Uh, X-rays, maybe. Other tests. Don't, don't, don't worry. At least he's still alive. I'm glad they let us see him for a minute. He didn't look as bad as I feared. Oh, oh here comes the nurse. The doctor looked at the x-rays, and there are no broken bones. Amazing. Your son has a closed head injury. What does that mean? A, a concussion? Uh, similar. Except for a cut on the top of his head and the brain swelling, he has no bleeding or other injuries. Nothing penetrated his brain, but he is in a coma. The Bible says in Job chapter 17, My days are past. My purposes are broken off, even the thoughts of my heart. And that was a description of our son as he lay in a coma week after week. 
We took turns staying by his side. Dell's left arm was folded over his chest and his left side began to atrophy, even though we moved his arms and legs. He was a big man, six feet four, and the hospital used a lift to move him in order to make the bed. We need to change the sheets, Mrs. Lytle. You hear that, Bosie? I'll be right over there. How did he get the name Bosie when he was little? He wore sleeper pajamas, and his sister thought he looked like Bozo the Clown on television. (laughs) When was he ever little? A long time ago. Okay, we definitely need a lift to move him. Uh, Careful! (gasps) Bosie, you dropped him. Get some help to pick him up. Dell was in the coma for 29 days. Then he awoke and remained at the hospital a few more days before he was moved to a rehabilitation hospital in Kansas City as an inpatient for intensive physical, speech, and occupational therapy. Your son needs extensive therapy. Because of the injury and the coma, his muscles have atrophied. We moved his arms and legs while he was unconscious. Well, that's good, but it's only part of the problem. We'll have to stretch his arm an inch at a time and then put a cast on it to hold it in that position. Uh, The pain will be excruciating. It'll take weeks to get his arm straightened out, and even then, he'll need hours of therapy before he can move his arm on his own. He's going to need a lot of help then. Uh For months, maybe years. I have to wonder why God allowed this to happen. Each week, the cast was removed so Dell's arm could be stretched an inch, as much as he could stand. Then the cast was replaced. This process was repeated many times. Even when his arm was straight and the cast was no longer necessary, he needed therapy to move his arm, and then only slowly. There were other problems. How's Bosey? The arm is doing a little better, but he still falls when he tries to walk without the walker or cane. Left side weakness again? Like a stroke? Yes. We've attached a brace to his left shoe going up to his knee to hold his knees in place. Otherwise, his left leg tends to swing out and the knee bends backward when he walks. Will he ever walk normally again? It's unlikely. But someday he should be able to get around with a walker or a cane. He's still falling? Yes. Stairs will definitely be a problem. And his speech, is that getting better? Well, you'll see. He's working on that. I can understand him, but he won't sound like his old self. He's still having trouble feeding himself? Getting there, his speech therapist said. He's right-handed. You'd think there wouldn't be a problem. His right arm has spasticity. The shaking makes it hard for him. My poor son. What else is wrong? Dell says he has double vision. Double vision? Yeah, I'm not surprised. What do you do for that? We put a patch over his left eye to strengthen his right eye and vice versa. Do you think he'll be ready to come home in a month? Well, that's what they said. He's already been there two months. But he still falls when he tries to walk without assistance. Can't stay there forever. We'll have to get the house ready for a wheelchair. There's time. I worry about him going back to drugs when he gets out. How can he when he can't get around? I asked the church if they could send someone Bosie's age to visit him at the hospital to share the gospel with him. What'd they say? They didn't have anyone. So I called another church and they said they'd send someone, but so far they haven't. Well, we haven't been very faithful in our attendance, Donna. No. I'd like to start going again as soon as Bosie comes home. Right now is hard because we visit him on Sunday. It's always something, isn't it? There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19. And God had a plan for us, I would learn. If we believe not, Yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. One day as I was leaving work, a young man I knew inquired about Bosie. How is Bosie doing, Donna? Better, but his speech is still a struggle and he's not able to stand well. He's going to need outpatient therapy for a long time. Keep the faith. 
Who knew that a closed head injury had so many complications? We're praying for him at church. Thank you. I called a couple of churches and asked them to visit him. I hoped they'd share the gospel with him, but so far none of them have gone. They haven't? No. Bosie needs the Lord. We all do. Young people from my church will visit him. Bosie? Yes? We're from a church in your hometown of Grandview. I work with your mother. Oh. We heard you're going home soon. Yes. Soon. Next week. Wonderful. Praise God you survived that awful crash. Yes. We'd like to invite you to our Bible study on Monday night at church. Would you like to come? Okay. Great. If you don't have a ride, someone can get you and take you home. Dad can take me. Okay. In the meantime, remember that Jesus loves you so much he died for you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank Jesus. We'll see you Monday night, okay? We'll hear about Dell's decision shortly. Now, though, here's Pacific Garden Mission's president, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. Do you ever wonder how Pacific Garden Mission helps so many people redeem their lives from hopelessness? We publish a monthly newsletter, the PGM News, that explains through articles and color pictures people and ministries we support. You can receive the PGM News completely free. Simply write and ask for your subscription. You'll find articles that detail our various ministries, like Unshackled and the Bread of Life, the Men and Women's Division, the PGM Medical Clinic, and those who care for hurting people. The PGM News is a glossy newsletter that reveals the heart of our mission our purpose of sharing the transforming power of the gospel with the compassion of Christ. Start your free subscription now. Write to us at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. I hadn't been to church in nearly a decade, and I wasn't eager to go to Bible study but I couldn't say no to the people who made the effort to visit me in the hospital. After three months of rehabilitation, I went home with my parents. I was still using a wheelchair the night Dad took me to the Bible study. God has wonderful promises in the Bible, but he also has stern warnings. Hosea chapter 4 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Believers are priests to God. We are to worship him, serve him, glorify him. Therefore, 2 Timothy chapter 2 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Folks, read the word. The psalmist wrote, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Read God's word every day. You don't eat just once a week, do you? We're supposed to consume God's word daily. Jeremiah wrote in chapter 15, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Now, there's a true believer. Now, if you say you love the Lord and are called by his name, Read his word. What did you think of the Bible study? Well, that guy is nuts. Why do you say that? Well, he said you should read the Bible every day. Who has time for that? Well, he's right. We probably should. Yeah, and, and you should go to church every week. Well, we can't go down home and go hunting and fishing. Spending time with family is important, too. Well, that's not all. He thinks a family should have devotions every day. Pray together. That wouldn't hurt. What did you think of it, Bosie? I liked it. Good. 
I want to go back. The next Monday night, Dad took me to the Bible study again. And this time, he realized the preacher really knew the Bible. I was still in a wheelchair and had a patch over one eye, looking like a pirate as I listened. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You aren't saved by what you do. You're saved by what Jesus did on the cross. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You don't change yourself. God changes you when you come to him in faith, believing that Christ died for your sins. If there's anyone here who wants to receive God's gift of eternal life, raise your hand. I raised my hand. But then the preacher added that anyone who was serious should stand to their feet. I couldn't stand, so I was pretty discouraged. But the preacher had seen my hand and sent a young man who wheeled me out into the hall to explain from the Bible what God says about salvation. Do you believe you're a sinner, Bozy? Terrible. More than most. God says in Romans chapter 3, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. We're all guilty before God, and he makes the same offer to all. Come to the cross of Christ and be forgiven. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What do I do? Romans chapter 10 promises that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Is that clear? Yes. Would you like to do that? Yes. In your own words, ask God to save you, and he will, Dell. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I prayed, asking God to save me, and he did. Later, I was carried in my wheelchair to the church baptistry for baptism, and I began growing in knowledge of the Lord as a young man discipled me. In time, I began walking with a walker. For the next year, I continued rehabilitation therapy as an outpatient. They helped me get my GED and even had a ceremony that my family, pastor, and church friends attended. That year, I moved from my parents' home to a high-rise, low-income apartment the church owned. The apartment was right next door to the church where I attended a school of ministry. That's how I met Rachel, who helped me with my homework. Let me uh, rewrite that paper, Dell. Thanks. Your writing is a lot better than mine. Oh, you do very well, considering all that you've been through. I'm getting there, but my right hand still has a mind of its own. I was wondering, Del, why do some people call you Bosey? It was a nickname, but my therapist says it's unprofessional, and I should use my real name in ministry. She's right. I'm learning to drive again, Rachel. Oh, that's great. With God, all things are possible. I wish I had known Jesus years ago. Oh, you're right, but you can't lament the past, Del. All you can do is live in the present. Yes. I believe God can use even me. He does. You're an inspiration, Del. The way you never give up. He got your attention the hard way, but now all he asks is a willingness to be obedient. That's in this lesson from Isaiah, chapter 6. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. The Lord has called every believer to go out and... Preach the gospel. Yes. Tell them about the Savior. And you do that all the time. 
I got my driver's license, and Rachel and I began dating. I volunteered to work in a ministry our church supported at a faith-based private prison in our county. I led a prayer group open to inmates and employees alike. I loved Rachel very much and wanted to marry her. I love you too, Del. I want to marry you, but I have nothing to offer you. You're more than enough. I'll never be able to work normally. The Lord will provide what we need, Del. Trust Him. I do, Rachel. It amazes me how He's worked in our family. My parents are going to church again, regularly, and they've rededicated their lives to Christ. My sisters are saved, too, and the oldest is serving the Lord. See? God is working His own way. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Good thing, huh? God really does take the broken lives, the junk that nobody wants, the worst of us, and turns it all around. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I love that verse. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Then it's settled. We'll get married in September. Rachel and I were married nine months after we met. God gave us three children, two girls and a boy. Our church had a ministry at the county detention center in Kansas City where I helped to share the love of God with young offenders. Drugs are not the answer to your problems. Jesus is the answer. I tried most every drug there is except heroin. Overdosed a couple of times. Almost died once. I wanted to control my life. Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The thief is the devil, and he wants to steal your birthright, to know God. He wants to destroy every opportunity you have to make good. I joined the Navy so I wouldn't have to go to jail, and I worked hard, but the thief lured me into drugs. And a month before my time was up, I was kicked out of the Navy. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came home and kept using drugs, and I was on my way to a party when I was hit by a train. But you know something? I'd rather be hit by a train than spend eternity in hell. I was on my way to hell, but God spared my life. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. You don't want to go to hell. <laughs> the Lord sent me to tell you He loves you. So much he sent his son to die for your sins. I taught Bible study once a week to inmates, spending quality time one-on-one -on -one with the men. Nothing compares with leading someone to Christ. Four years ago, I began experiencing a new problem. What did the doctor say? It's called brachial plexipathy. That's terrible. I know what that is. I didn't. The pain is in the neck, literally, where the nerve leaves the spinal column. What treatment do they suggest? Not much. More physical therapy. Oh, you're right-handed, Del. This is serious. I know, honey. I can hardly use my arm, and the left one is pretty useless. I won't be able to help you around the house much anymore. Oh, don't worry about it. It's depressing. Why me? Why now? I'm trying to serve God. His ways are past finding out, Del. Keep trusting him. The neurologist gave me some pain meds. I thought I was through with that. This brachial plexopathy is probably related to the train accident. Who knows? Bottom line is I'm out of the ministry for the duration. That was the lowest point in my life as my daily functions became limited. My dominant arm was partly paralyzed and I became very depressed. But gradually, the Lord restored most of the ability in my right arm and I resumed my ministry, helping at a rescue mission. I preach at the mission twice a month.
Hello? Hi, Dell. I called to say your baby sister is now a pastor's wife. Praise the Lord. It's amazing what the Lord has done in our family. Yes? She was saved because of your witness, Dell. The way you lived your life after you were saved. We are His workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I can tell that you're teaching the discipleship class. And I heard you're speaking at the Sunday night prayer meeting in church. Praise the Lord. We'll be there. No matter who you are or what your situation, you can serve the Lord. I send out daily devotions to nearly 200 people. As Paul wrote, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Psalm 50, verse 15 says, And call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Do you glorify God with your life? There is only one way, and that is through the cross of Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus said, you must be born again. And you can do that now by praying with us. Dear God, I admit that I am a sinner and cannot save myself. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead and lives forevermore, able to save me now. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and help me glorify you. Thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us know you prayed and we'll send you some literature to help you walk in new life. The address? Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, www.unshackled.org. This is program number 3,362. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today. Your letter means a great deal to us. The address? Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Day or night, you may call Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago and talk with someone who cares. 312-492-9410 Someone is waiting for your call. 312-492-9410